All right, so today's a pretty big day. I'm gonna start manual swapping this car. Um, the SMG has done me really well. We've we've had this car in SMG for you know as long as we've owned it, and it's actually never given us any problems till recently. It finally crapped out, and I told myself that the next time that happened, I'm for sure gonna manual swap it. And everyone that's ever told me to manual swap it, now's your time. Today it's gonna be pretty mellow. I'm just gonna start undoing a bunch of stuff. Uh, today's day one. It's Monday. We'll see how long this takes. Um, so first things first, you want to make sure your car is in neutral and uh, undo the salmon relay from underneath the hood and disconnect the battery. So I'm going to do that real quick. Next up is removing the intake manifold and everything surrounding it pretty much. Uh, I'm not going to walk you through step by step. Actually, this whole video is not really meant to walk you step by step every process, but I think this video, if I can make it correctly, will be more of a guide if you're ever going to do this yourself. Uh, just little steps here and there, which I found online after doing a bunch of research um, that can hopefully help you if you're doing the swap too. But yeah, next up, remove the intake manifold. In a nutshell, pretty much, you got to remove the air box. Uh, you got to undo all this cabin air filter stuff, which I totally forgot to order a new one of, which sucks, but I'll have to order that. And then once you get all this stuff out the way, you pretty much have to undo all six of these clamps here and the air box should come off. You have some hoses underneath and stuff you gotta unplug, but it's pretty simple. All right, I just got the intake manifold off. As you can see, I closed up all the throttle bodies with some tape just in case you don't want anything getting in there. Um, second, as you can see here, here is your enemy, the SMG pump itself right here. And so um, I undid these four hard lines right here. I took these off in a, with an 11 open end right there. Uh, as you can see, there's a starter and the transmission's right behind it. And so you're going to need to get to that eventually. But for now, with the intake manifold off and those four lines off, beware, a bunch of SMG fluid's going to come out. It's fine. Just wipe it up. Uh, I think from now on, I'm going to jack the car up and get underneath and start taking everything off. So the next thing you're going to take off is this metal skid plate. It's held on by a bunch of 17 mils. I already had this off, and so next up I'm going to get under and take all the exhaust off. Once you do that, you got to take all the metal shielding off underneath. Let's see if I can get underneath. So yeah, all this exhaust needs to come out, obviously. Uh, and this metal shielding is going to have to come out too. I think it's just a bunch of 10 mils everywhere. And once you undo these, that drops off and you get better access to the transmission in there. Obviously you can't see it well, but once I get everything off, I'll check back in with you guys. All right, I got the exhaust out fully. If I could give any advice, it'd be to make sure that you keep a jack sand underneath the front here where it connects to the headers. And when you lower the muffler part, section three, uh, if you have two jacks, keep them under both sides, like evenly so when you lower it it's evenly distributed a problem that i ran into was when i was lowering it this part of the hanger got like caught under the studs and so it was almost like impossible to like take the exhaust off so i had to like pry it off but that's my piece of advice after you take the whole exhaust out next up is removing the heat shielding underneath all right so i got the heat shield off this was just held on by like a bunch of 10 mil bolts and i think one eight mil near the uh, passenger side once again, I'm not showing this stuff because honestly, this part's pretty easy. If you guys aren't able to do this, I recommend not doing this at all. Um, I'll also leave the, uh, the forum guide that I'm following in the link below. So make sure that if you're doing this, follow that too. Like I studied that and then uh, now I'm doing it. So next up, what I'm going to do is drain the transmission. It's uh, held on by a 17 mil bolt and I'm going to undo that and let you guys know what's next. Let's see how clean I can do this. Oh, hello. She was dirty, so this was a good time to replace the transmission fluid. Yeah, Jesus Christ, that's really dirty. After this drains out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably put the transmission jack underneath the transmission or just a regular jack just to hold it up while I undo this um, I don't know if you guys can see this transmission cross member right here. Cause we need to undo this to undo the drive shaft here. So what I'm gonna do is undo, I'm gonna say this for the 10th time, undo the transmission cross member, 
and then I believe it's an 18 mil head on this side and then it's an 18 mil on the other side too. So that's why we need to take this off, get a wrench on that side and probably some socket here and undo the uh, drive shaft bolts right here on the flex disc. And then, yeah, so after this drains out, I'll show you guys that part. All right, now that I've got something to hold the uh, transmission from underneath, hopefully it works, I'm gonna be using a 13 mil socket to undo the four bolts that hold this transmission cross brace on to the transmission, onto the body of the car. All right, well, I need to get behind this guibo here, so I'm just gonna take everything off. So I'm pretty sure these um, nuts that are underneath the transmission mounts are also 13, so I'm just gonna undo these. There's that. You guys seen something that I'm not? <sighs> okay, there we go. It's off. I don't know if you're supposed to you know, aggressively take it off like that, but she's off. Let's see, I think it's just more 13 mils on top and this thing should just come off. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a wrench and take that off, so I'll check back in when that's done. All right, now that the transmission's all supported with the jack stand and I took the transmission cross brace off, next up is removing this driveline stuff, so you gotta lower the drive shaft and remove these, you know, nuts and bolts here from the, the uh, flex disc. The center support bearing here is preloaded, so what you need to do is mark this area here with a Sharpie. So when you tighten this back up, you put it back in the same exact spot. You don't wanna bolt this back up differently because that'll just cause uneven wear or something on your bearing, and you're just gonna need to get a new center support bearing quicker, so you don't wanna do that. So I'm about to mark this. These are both 13 mil nuts right here, so I'm gonna undo those, and then after that, I'm gonna get to the drive shaft here. It's an 18 mil on both sides. I'm pretty sure I can just get away with taking these three off for now and lowering the drive shaft and supporting it by like a jack stand right here. So I'm gonna get going and do that. So this is day two. I ended up taking all six of the nuts and bolts off of the uh, drive shaft here. Took the flex disc off, so that's off now. It was pretty beat up. And now that that's off and it's hanging here, I got this ghetto zip tie situation. I got the box underneath just in case. Sorry the filming's so bad under here. Uh, next up is removing all the SMG electrical connectors. So just pretty much removing all the electrical connectors from the transmission itself. Got like one here. Got to remove these from the side clips here. Um, I'm assuming removing these hard lines from the transmission. All these electrical lines there. Um, I showed in the clip earlier that I already have the hard lines from the pump above removed. So I'm gonna remove all the clips from down here and the plugs and try to remove the SMG pump from above. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to remove all these clips. All right, I just got the pump out. Um, there's a couple things you gotta do. First, I took off the bracket here that holds the um, intake manifold up. It has the two slots for the intake manifold like grommets. Uh, I took that out. From here, I believe I used the 13 mil to get that out. I might be wrong. Uh, once that's done, obviously I took all the connectors off of the transmission from the SMG. I can go down in there and show you guys after, but once you connect or disconnect everything, these are already off. Um, what you need to do is remove the bolt that goes here. I believe this is it right here. I think it was just a 10 mil. And this part, I don't know if there's supposed to be a bolt underneath, but a uh, little nipple kind of went into there, just took that out from the pump. And right here, this was the one I got hung up on. Underneath, you gotta go from underneath and use a 10 mil to get the, the bolt that goes into the pump from right here. And once that happens, you can kind of just finagle it out and the pump is officially out. All right, with everything removed, I'm going to remove the SMG slave cylinder. It's really hard to see. See if I can focus it. So one of the nuts is a, it's a 13. One's right here, and obviously I can't show you guys, but it's on the other side. So I'm gonna loosen those and take the slave cylinder off. And then after that, I believe it's time to remove all the transmission bolts. All right, as you can see, I got the slave cylinder out. 
Not gonna lie, this thing kind of sucked to get out, but it's just two 13 millimeter nuts right here. Once you do that, this thing just kind of yanks out. From what I hear, you could reuse this slave cylinder. You kind of just gotta bend this line around. Um, but I mean, I bought a new one. You might as well just get a new one. They're not that expensive and this thing's prone to failure, so you might as well. Next up, once that's removed, the transmission's pretty much ready to drop. So here's the layout. I printed this out from the DIY that I found online. Once again, I'll link that in the description. But the reason why I printed this out is because the bolts are all different. I'm pretty sure it's an E10, an E12, and an E14. And all of them, are, I think, are different lengths and stuff. So I printed this out. I'm going to take each one out and put them next to, you know, the position on this paper. Um, I'm pretty sure, like, these top two ones are the starter bolts. And you have, like, a 10 mil here and like a dowel pin somewhere. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna start that and we'll see how it goes. I'm sure this part's gonna be hell, but let's see. Oh. All right, now with the transmission bolts all out, kinda took all day, but it's time to finally remove the transmission. And online, it says to jack the car up in front of the sway bar. Like, it's kind of hard to find a spot, but we just kind of propped it underneath. I don't really know what it is, but there's a little metal something underneath the engine in front of the sway bar. And you're not really jacking the engine up, you're just holding it up. So we just jacked it up there, and that should do well. Okay, so now it's time to put this underneath the actual transmission and lower it down. Alright guys, we successfully got the transmission out. Yeah. It was kind of a battle, not gonna lie. Just a lot of shaking, a lot of just jimmy rigging and just jiggling, and it, it eventually comes out. But yeah, here it is. And so this is the belt housing. I'm not sure if you undo it from here or there, but either way, you undo it. Uh, this is the end of day two. Tomorrow I'll take this apart and send it off to Lang Racing, where we're gonna machine the bell housing, put all the detents in it. Probably show you guys taking all this off too. This is I'm pretty sure the actuator for the SMG. And yeah, end of day two done. All right, so it's the start of a new day, and I'm gonna start taking apart the transmission a little bit. Um, I'm gonna start out by taking off this SMG shift actuator right here. From what it looks like, it's just held on by this 13 that I've already started undoing. There's another 10, you guys can see right here, and another 10. Let's see, I don't know if I can film it. But another 10's, you know, under here. So I'm gonna undo those three, and probably this right here as well, because the hard lines are kind of connected to it. So I'm gonna undo these three real quick, and then try to take the shift actuator off. With this little pin out from the selector joint, the uh, actuator was able to come off. So you're gonna need a, a little punch and get that out in order for this actuator to come off, but once you do that, she comes right off. And so the next step is going to be to take this uh, joint off fully, because we have a new one, and after that the bell housing should come off. With all 10 bell housing bolts removed, it's now time to remove the bell housing itself. I'm gonna be using this rubber mallet here. Uh, just another tip, I guess, when you're taking out all the bell housing bolts. I did have to take the drain plug out for the transmission to get one of them out, but that's pretty much the only thing. You're going to want to use kind of a thin thin wrench, too, to get them off because it gets kind of tight in some spots. All right, now I'm going to use this and get the bell housing off. All right, I got the bell housing officially off. It actually wasn't too bad to take it off. Honestly, it was pretty much off. You just have to jiggle it around. Uh, I will say, be really careful when you take it off though. You don't want this kind of, um, you know, on its side, or I kind of did it in the worst position now that I think back on it, because I did it upright, trying to avoid anything falling off, but instead something did, but I got really lucky. So this is the way it looks. I'll, um, I can put in a photo of what it's supposed to look like with all the washers everywhere correctly from the, the uh, forum link, um, I could try to put that in. But what happened to me was one of these washers here actually came off. It was this one right here that came off and it fell in. And luckily it was you know close enough for me to grab it. So 
be really careful when you take it off because I'm, I'm really not sure how I would have gotten that out had I had it not dropped super close. Now what I'm going to start doing is taking apart the interior pieces and for starters I'm going to take this godforsaken SMG knob off. I'm pretty sure all you have to do is pull up and then after that you kind of just take this trim off and there's probably some clips you got to undo but that's pretty easy so I'll film this and we'll see what it looks like afterwards. All right, I got the uh, shifter out. All you needed to do was take the 10 mil bolt or nuts off. I did have to remove this like console piece first, just a little bit to get out of the way. But the three nuts are off. It looks like there's another little connector here. Just yanks out and this junk hunk of garbage is now out of here. So, all that's left is drilling this out. I need to go buy a three and a quarter inch hole saw and get to work on this right here. So we'll check back in once I have that and we drill that out. All right, we can see the hole is here. Three and a quarter seem to be perfect. I'll probably sand this down with like a file or something and clean up all the shards in there, but there you go. There you have it. We're all set for the shifter. So for this next part, I think I'm going to start putting the uh, clutch pedal in. And to start out with, I'm just going to take this seat out. I believe it's just uh, four 16s, two 16 bolts in the back here, and two 16 millimeter nuts in the front. So I'm going to take these off and then take the seat out, and uh, I'll check you guys back in after that. I'm going to next take the uh, this black panel off. It looks like it's just one Phillips head screwdriver, another one, another one, and a push pin here. Um, I also have a, a sub, so I'm going to need to take this sub, like, leveler out. And then uh, this thing should come out. Right, now with all the connectors unplugged, this thing should just pull out. And you'll have access to the pedal assembly. Now to put this clutch cable or clutch line in this one connects from the master cylinder underneath the pedal to the actual clutch line that goes to the slave cylinder we're gonna need to take off this dead pedal here there should be one Phillips head here and once you undo that I think there's another one under it and um, once you take those off this thing kind of pries off you got to take some of this trim off I think you got to kind of pull this back and then we're able to remove the carpet a little bit up above there and you can see here this is actually where the uh, that line is going to pop through and connect to the master cylinder. So I'm going to get started and take these Phillips heads out and then try to pry this thing off. All right, the dead pedal is now removed. As you can see, I had to kind of pop this trim panel off and this like rubber lining off a little bit. And then this thing kind of just pries out. And then you can see that the uh, trunk unlocking mechanism needs to be unplugged. So I'm going to do that and this thing should be fully out. With the dead pedal out, um, I can see here that there's another one of these kind of clips that screw in, which I'm going to take out. All right. We should be able to just kind of peel this carpet back a little bit. Kind of get to the, uh, the bottom of the car and be able to run this clutch line out a little bit. Let's go under and see what we can do. All right, now we're under the car um, as far as my position. Here's the clutch and flywheel, literally right below it. And here is where we're gonna run that line through. And so as you can see, the SMG cars come with this little rubber grommet already installed, so I'm gonna peel this back and remove it. There you go, just like that. And so here's the clutch kind of pipe that needs to go in. This side goes into the cabin, and so I'm gonna try to push this in, try to snake it through. This is not gonna be easy. All right, I'm gonna try to deal with this, and once again, I'll pick the camera up when it's done. All right, so I got this line in. I ended up taking this grommet out. I gotta look into where this actually goes. With this there, it really wasn't fitting properly. Um, but yeah, it's in. 
If you're doing this by yourself, I will say it's just a lot of going from here back into the cabin and like adjusting the line. It kind of takes a little bit and it's kind of frustrating, but just work with it and it'll eventually just snake through. And right now, this is set up perfectly. This goes to the clutch line, which ultimately leads to the slave cylinder, which goes around here somewhere. Um, so this is good for now. Uh, let me get out and show you guys the cabin. All right, and inside the cabin, you're able to see the end of that line right there, and that plugs into the master cylinder. Obviously, it's a little loose right now because, you know, it's not plugged in anything, but you take that little plastic nipple off or piece, and then it quick connects into the clutch master cylinder. I put this carpet piece back in. I put this clip back in. Everything fits back nicely. Make sure these wires are still hanging out. We'll put the clutch stop right here. I'm pretty sure that's where that goes. And then, yeah, next up, I think I'm going to mount the master cylinder and start dealing with all the wiring and stuff. All right, so to mount the or the clutch master cylinder, we're gonna first wanna take this 10 mil bolt off right here because one of the bolts for the master cylinder actually bolts into this spot, so we gotta remove this first. All right, with that part removed, you should have bought two new bolts. Um, these bolts go through the master cylinder and through these two holes right here you can't see them too well but here you go one of the bolts here and the other bolts here through that nut right there that's welded onto that bracket with those two bolts bolted in the clutch master cylinder is now mounted onto the pedal so we're all set with that so the next part is the wiring part of this install uh, you probably know you're gonna have to buy this clutch switch here this attaches to the clutch master cylinder itself uh, and that part is just this outer part, and this is actually the clutch lead. And as you can see, there's four wires. Uh, you end up not using these connectors, so I'm going to have to cut these off right here. Uh, in order, this first pin here is the brown with black stripe wire. This goes into the brake light switch, and it's the ground wire. This second one is uh, the lead. This is the blue with brown stripe wire. This goes to pin 20 in the DME. Pin 3 is the purple with the yellow stripe, and this also goes to the brake light switch. This is your 12 volt power source. And this is pin 4 with the blue and black stripe, and this goes to pin 8 in the EWS. Uh, I'll show you guys where these plug into once we get in the car, but as for now, what I'm going to do is cut this connector off and... Um, Pins uh, one and three, the ones that go to the brake light switch, I'm going to be using these four because you got to splice into the other wires that go into the brake light switch. And pins one and, no, pins two and four, the ones that go to the EWS and the DME, I bought uh, these wires. These ones have the little connector pin piece that go into the, the DME and uh, EWS itself. So I'm going to use a solder gun and I'm going to use these wire crimpers or wire cutters and uh, get to work. I'm going to solder the wire that goes to the EWS together onto this thing and so that just goes into pin 8 and I'm going to connect these two so the one that goes to the, the DME is long enough to actually read the, or not read, but reach the box up there. So I'm going to get started. All right, so as you can see, this is where the brake light switch connects to right here, and I have it unplugged. Um, and it's kind of hard to tell, but I have the brown and black wire from the clutch switch lead uh, spliced into the brake light switch, brown and black wire, and I did the same with the purple and yellow wire. So I'm gonna plug this back in, let's see if I can. All right, so these two wires are spliced in, so that should be good. That's the power and ground. Uh, next up, here is the EWS here. You just disconnect it. Um, there's also another tab. It should be like right here. You kind of want to push up on, and that removes this part. And so you could slide the pin that we soldered on earlier into the connector itself. 
if I do recall, this is pin nine right here. So right above it, there's an empty slot for pin eight. And so I'm gonna slide the one that we sold it on into there and clip this back in. So I got the pin from the clutch switch put into slot eight on the EWS right here. Um, so I'm gonna take this black connector and slide it back on, slide it back on, and then this just clicks back into place. All right, so it's back in. The pin is now connected. And it's not coming out, and that's in there. So next up is going to the DME and plugging it in there. Uh, before I go and pin in the DME pin from the clutch switch, I'm actually gonna wire, or not wire, I'm gonna run this hose. This is the, uh, the hose that goes from the brake reservoir uh, down to the master cylinder here. So. And you can see this little X right here, right there, and that's where it's gonna lead to. That ultimately goes to like the fuse box DME area, so I'm gonna be running this hose and snake it up through there, and hopefully I can find it from the top. I was successfully able to get this line through the firewall there. You kind of just got to push it through and you find it up top and pull it through. Um, and once again, I'm pretty sure you don't need a hose clamp for these because this is just a gravity feed. It's not really like a vacuum or a, a pressure. So this just, you know, you cut this little nipple off here and you put this line on it. You don't really do that until the end until you're really ready to bleed the clutch. And so when you do that, you're gonna to wanna to siphon some brake fluid out of here because you don't want that getting all over your paint. That stuff's really bad for it. So I still gotta do that, but that's gonna wait till the very end. And obviously you can see this is not gonna stay this long, so I gotta cut it at some point. But for now, it's up, it's here. It's, uh, it's connected to the master cylinder down there. You also can't forget to mount the master cylinder to the pedal itself. You use this clip and it kind of just goes you gotta make sure that that's extended. It kind of goes through the uh, the pedal and master cylinder. The locking pin is fully seated in there. Um, the, the pin itself is like shaped. I don't know if you can tell from this side, but there is a flat side to it and you gotta clip it in a little bit, but it's in there and so that means this master cylinder is like fully mounted in there. And the rest is putting the clutch switch in there and pinning the last DME pin. Now coming up here to the DME, we need to get to pin 20 in this second little box right here. So in order to do that, we need to get this first one out because this slide down needs to go all the way down. So just, there's a little clip, undo that, move this out the way. And once you do that, you should be able to slide this down and this should come out and I need to figure out a way to do similarly what we did to the the EWS and remove this black cover part so we could get to pin 20 and put our pin in so I'm gonna figure that out and then get back to you guys I probably can't show you guys on camera but if you look at it closely there's a little tab you just kind of push in and you're able to take one of two of these slots out Look on the uh, connector itself and it should tell you which one uh, 20 is on. This will focus. All right, well this won't focus. Anyway, you take you know one of them out and then it should show you on the connector itself as well which slot is 20. I don't know if you guys can read that, but the 20 is on the very right, th right there. It should be empty like the, uh, the EWS was, so I'm gonna plug the pin in and put this back in. With pin 20 connected, it's time to put this back into the whole connector itself and plug it back in. Both connectors are back in. Uh, just click them back in place, it's the same thing. And as far as running this wire from the clutch switch to this connector right here, you guys can see this light right there, that's actually the cabin, so I'm gonna show you inside where exactly I put that. 
And you guys can see right here, this is where I snaked that wire through that I just connected. Um, yeah, so like the, the, the line I did earlier, you kind of just snake it through and it should reach the top and you can connect it all the way through. Anyway, that's that for wiring, I'm pretty sure. Um, hopefully everything works, you know, correctly. I'm really hoping that's the plan. But other than that, if you guys are thinking about doing this and you're scared about the wiring aspect, because I know that's one thing that I was kind of worried about, it's really not that bad. Um, once you get those wires and kind of just solder them together and use those quick connectors, it's, it's really just four wires. You wire in differently and it's super simple because everything's already there for you. Anyway, I'll probably button this back up and after that, I'm really just waiting for the bell housing to come back from being machined and then everything should be ready to get back together. So I got the bell housing back. As you can see here, the, uh, the pins and the detents are all in and this spring here, the spring is actually what causes it to center back. This thing is now hard. Before it was like easy to move and free to move and now you gotta like really put some force into it. That's what causes the shifter to go back into neutral. Next up is putting the bell housing back onto the transmission. I put some assembly lube back on this area. This is a tip I saw on, I forgot his channel's name, but I saw it on his YouTube channel, I'll link it below. One of these washers is the ones that came off, so it's helpful to keep this assembly lube on it so it doesn't fall back off when we put the bell housing back on. The bell housing is now back on. You have to put a nice layer of black RTV all around the outer rim of the transmission and the bell housing and then you put the bell housing back on obviously and then for those 13s i don't know how anyone would ever get a torque wrench on there i'm still not sure if someone knows let me know but what i did was just put a 13 wrench on and just hammered it in until it was super tight because those bolts are on there really tight but yeah after that i cleaned it up as you can see it's pretty clean and now all i got to do is well actually yesterday or not yesterday today I bought a new throwout bearing, um, a fork, and like a pivot pin. So I'm actually picking those up tomorrow. Once I put those in, got to put the slave in and then throw the trans back in and start buttoning everything up. Right, so I got all the new parts installed. When I was going to put everything back together, I realized that the uh, clutch pivot pin was like disgusting. And this thing actually was, I really can't show this. This thing was like terrible to get out. As you can see, it's disintegrated. It's disgusting. So I replaced the pivot pin. I replaced this little, you know, paperclip looking thing that goes onto that pivot pin. I replaced the uh, the fork and the throwout bearing as well. And everything is packed up with white lithium grease. And next up, once all those things are all buttoned up, it's time to install the transmission back into the car. So I guess a couple tips. One installing that pivot pin, what I did was it wouldn't sit flush, so I had to get a piece of wood and just hammer it in like really aggressively. Um, as far as the selector joint, cause that has to be replaced too. That thing kind of sucked as well. You definitely need another person to help push the pin in as you're pushing the joint in. Cause that like bushing that's in there is actually really hard. And so you're going to need someone to help you. I have the um, selector rod installed right now. And yeah, it's time to put the transmission back into the car. The transmission is now back on. The starter is bolted in. Um, I've also plugged up, or not plugged up, but connected this line here. Uh, the hose, if you buy the OEM BMW one, is really long, so you're gonna have to cut it to length. Um, you don't use a hose clamp either because this is a gravity feed. You cut off the little plastic nipple there. Make sure you siphon some of the brake fluid out and so you don't get any of it on the paint. Um, I also just bled the clutch with the help of my mom. So shout out to my mom. Um, you can see here, where is it? Oh yeah, this is where the clutch line is piped up. So connects right there. You gotta buy those brackets as well. It goes, it goes to that you know clutch line that we had put through the carpet before. So yeah, with the clutch all bled. I plugged these two sensors back in just because I didn't want them dangling around. I don't think that should be a problem, but they're also not going to do anything because those related to the SMG. You are going to want to plug in this connector right here. I believe that's the reverse sensor, so you definitely want that plugged in. Um, I had four sensors left over, three being you know ones that plug into the SMG stuff and one being also SMG, but it's that big round connector. I think it's really time to start buttoning it up. 
I believe I'm gonna put the uh, exhaust back on first and all the heat shielding and then start from above afterwards and put all this stuff back onto the intake manifold, all that good stuff. All right, everything is uh, buttoned back up. The exhaust is back on, intake manifold, everything. So this is the moment of truth. Let's see if she starts. You guys are also watching this for the first time, such as I am. All right, let's see. Very nerve wracking. All right. Let's see if she starts. Gears work. All right, let's see. No start. I missed it, but it was because I wasn't pressing the brake. But the car starts. The car is back alive. Oh my God. You guys don't realize? The reason why I swapped it in the first place was because the car would not start because of the SMG. But <laughs> I don't think you guys understand how happy I am. The car starts. Everything sounds fine. Got some smoke down here, but that's just because uh, I probably got some oil on the headers. But the car has started. Um, good grief, I, I wish you guys knew how freaking soaked I was right now. The car sounds great. Oh my God, I'm in shock right now. I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna see if it, if it moves at all. Let's see if it does. I'll see if I can go into reverse and let's see if everything, if the clutch works out. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put the camera down. All right, so it's been a few hours. Uh, I drove the car. It still has a bit of a starting issue. I'm not sure if that's coding related, but we'll see. Other than that, the car drives fine. The car shifts fine. Um, I guess the last thing I have to do is put this back in. So you got to cut that out. I have a Dremel here. I'm going to cut this out and put this cover back in. All right, so... I as you can... it had it. It doesn't have Yeah, I guess not. Uh, we just cut this out. We Dremeled it out. Um, not the cleanest draw, but I mean, this will do. Uh... As you saw before, there's like an outline for it already. So you just cut that out and I'm gonna put this back in. All right, so this is it. I have the RTD shifter installed. I have the um, like styrofoam, you know, shifter surround under here. And I got this brand new Alcantara shift boot. Um, and all that's left is swapping my SMG wheel out for a six speed wheel. And I gotta get it tuned and coded actually coded first but also tuned because i have the build journal tune i can't speak right now um and i need to get that retuned as well what else oh another thing to note too i installed an rtd shifter and so i didn't install like the shift fork nor did i install the shifter bushing carrier down there um Obviously, if you do your research, you know what those things are. If you use a stock style shifter, you're gonna need those, but because I installed this, I just didn't put them in. Um, I'll show you guys a little shifting here. Try to keep my light up. There's first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and reverse. So this thing feels pretty cool. And yeah, so this is it for now. I just gotta get it coated out and tuned, and she should be good.